Congrats on the win. Thank you so much. Right here, Liz. Rip. Ah, there we go. Straight away. <laughs> uh, man, that had to feel good. It, it felt great, yeah. Were you one of those kind of um, champs who would tell herself, you know, I'm not the champ until I defend the title? Were you one of those kind? A hundred percent, yeah. Not only that, but uh, my mindset is walking every fight like I have to earn this, this belt, regardless if that's 10 down the road and I still have it undefeated as the champion or it's two more every fight I have to treat it like it's I'm trying to earn the right to have that belt because of how things wound up the first fight with her taking a little bit of umbrage toward toward the fight being stopped in general I know that you weren't exactly thrilled with with the stance that she took so does it feel like you know poetic justice kind of to end it the way that you did yeah, in all honesty, one of the things I've really been working is crucifix from every single position. So I really was trying to bait her to get back into a crucifix just anywhere. Just so I could say, like, not only am I going to finish you again in the same position, but I'm going to do a lot more dominant, a lot more dangerous. But, you know, one of the things they had to keep talking to me is, like, if an opportunity is there, you're a good grappler. Don't chase after something. And I saw it was there, and I knew I had to take it and just snap that arm. So when the, when the crowd got a little impatient, let's just say, right, which tends to happen when you, yeah. when you have situations like you guys had there in that round in the back of your head are you sitting there going just chill because i know what's potentially coming up here yeah exactly you know the fans don't know what's going on and they don't know what we're working towards and i wanted to drown her i want to take her into deep waters and put her in an uncomfortable position she had never been in before and the fans needed to see that there was going to be a reason why i was going to drown her until she couldn't come back up anymore and that's what i did were you um i guess surprised that i mean e even after how the first one ended she was a bigger betting favorite this fight than in the first fight against you. No, after all the talk that was going on, um, I, I mean, I don't pay attention to betting anyway, uh, but I just knew that there was a lot of controversy around it. And there were two people talking about it and it wasn't me. So the person that does the most commotion, that's who people are going to get behind. And I knew I, like, I'm not that person that talks. And I know in the fight game, everybody wants to get behind somebody. Like the, the trash talker is the one that people are either rooting against or rooting for, but they're paying attention to. So I know that's something I need to do more, but I knew that my actions would back it tonight. And that what happened originally was not circumstance that it was, it was something I created. We heard it. A little bit of what you were saying in the cage. Uh, just r run through it again for us. You know, what's next? What do you want? What are you looking for? Yeah, so Lima Lee McFarlane and I have been training partners for years. We have a lot of respect. We're really good friends. Um, and she's talking about she wants to retire and she wants her fight against me to be a retirement. Um, after one, her not making weight the last fight, I, and just, you know, who always wants to have to cut all the, all the way down all the time, it would make sense to me. And I want to be. Bellator is 135 champion, and I want to hold a belt in two divisions. And I can't think of anybody better to do that with than Alima as her retirement fight being my opening to opening a new division in Bellator. So I want to fight her in Hawaii for a retirement. And then Watanabe has worked way up the ranks. I think she deserves a second go because I think I did catch her by circumstance. I don't think that is what was supposed to happen. And to do that in Japan, where that's where I grew up, and it's her home roots, I think that would be a phenomenal card for Bellator to put on. Have you had conversations with Scott or anybody else about them opening up 135? Is it just wishful thinking, or or do you know something that the rest of us don't <laughs> officially know yet? I mean, is uh, it's it's mostly wishful thinking, but. Uh, if there's one thing that I've been doing since I've been a Bellator is trying to put things into fruition and putting out there what I want. This is something I want, just like I wanted to win the fight. I said I was going to win the fight by the second round. That's what I did tonight. So I think that uh, Bellator is going to listen, and hopefully they'll meet me with this, and we'll make a 135 division. Kay Williams for Can Chronicles Media. Once again, all gratitude and smiles. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. What does the win tonight do for you personally, away from the cage? Uh, personally, uh, this is the first time I've ever gone away for fight camp. My head coach, he moved out to Virginia, and I have all the faith and confidence in his ability, and this is the first time I've ever left home for a coach. That's how much belief I have in his abilities and trust that I have in him and confidence. So I was like, hey, I know that you're moving to Virginia, but can I follow you and do my fight camp with you? So that meant that I left my wife with two kids, our nonprofit organization with all the dogs that she's training by herself and doing it all on her own. So this is a big win for me because I left her all alone. I had to sacrifice. She had to sacrifice so much. So this is something that I had to show her that all that sacrifice that we both did wasn't for anything, that, that I did the right thing. And also during the fight tonight, 
Did you find yourself having to make necessary or different adjustments compared to your last match against Velasquez? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, definitely um, she didn't run like she did the first time. And then on the cage, I definitely felt stronger against her the first time in the run round where I just could easily manhandle her and move her around to control her. And where if I would give and take for, for a knee, she would give back. And she didn't, I mean, for one, she was punching me below the belt, which I had another ref solve, which was definitely a surprise for me. <laughs> um, but I anticipated that if I need her, she was going to need me back and off balance. And she definitely learned from our first exchange in the fight that that's what ended the fight for her. So she adapted for that. And they came as a surprise. So I was definitely trying to bait her there with it. Liz, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, similar question you already asked. Uh, the, the crowd was booing. Um, you have such an advantage on her on the ground. Uh, how hard is it to kind of stick to that game plan, knowing that, you know, a submission's going to open or something like that, but, you know, not having that, you want to please the crowd and let me slug it out with her? I mean, if you listen to my coaches, I actually went against the game plan a little bit. <laughs> I just, I had pictured something so much and I had worked on it, I saw it in my head. And as much as I, like, even tell other teammates, like, just because you picture something, don't do it, listen to the coaches. I just knew what we had worked on, I could tie into so much better, and I knew I had the gas tank to do it. Um, so that was going against the, against the game plan. But I know we all had the confidence that once I got there, I was doing the right thing. And whether the crowd boos or not, I've been in fights where I'm, I'm coming into a different country, and the entire country is against me. So the, the fans don't really sway me one way or the other. Uh, I want to go back to what you talked about, Alima Leigh McFarlane. I I'm a little surprised you said that you want that match because earlier this week you were asked about it. Sure, they were asking to defending the title against her. But the one thing you really stressed was like, hey, she's my friend, but I don't want to give someone a gift. I mean, she's lost two out of her last three fights. I mean, do you really think she deserves a title shot? At the, in the 135 division where the, she has a clean record, yes. Uh, there's, you know, there's something to be said. She did so much. I don't think that... The flyweight division would be where it's at today in Bellator if it wasn't for Alima. She did such a good job of being a voice and advocate for women and an advocate for this division that I certainly want to close out her career in a, in a good way. And it'd be nice for me to not have to go all the way to 125, and I know she'd love it too. So I think that we could put her on a go sh good show at 135, and it doesn't compromise the 125 division by doing that. Uh, and my last question, I was thinking about you know the three major uh, United States based organ uh, MMA organizations, Bellator, UFC, and PFL, you're the only woman who's an American who's a champion right now. What does that mean to you? That That's a crazy, you know, I didn't even realize that that was the case until you just said it, and I just put all of it in my mind. Um, not only that, but I'm, I'm probably, I mean, when you say that, I'm also the only Marine Corps veteran that's holding this belt. So that means a lot to be able to represent the entire country and doing it strongly. Congrats on the win, champ. Thank you. You mentioned fighting at 135 for the title, maybe next. Um, what is that cut for you to, to get down to 125 now? And would you have to change your, your body composition at all to really compete at the highest of levels at bantamweight? No, I don't think so at all. Um, I carry a lot more bone density and muscle mass. I mean, I've done DEXA scans and I've done all the math. And 125 is, I'm a disciplined human being in general. I'm a Marine at heart, you know, and I carry that with me. And I, I have discipline all the time. Like, I'm going to go have some cookies tonight and I'll enjoy this weekend. I'm driving out to New York City to go see my mom and spoil her for a little bit. So I'll enjoy that time. And then the moment that she's out the door, I'm going to go back to eating clean again, right? So for me, it's not that difficult in the sense that, I know what I'm working towards, and if it means the difference between having some cake or doing a workout, I'm going to choose a workout every day. So the discipline to get to 125, it's there, but you know, it's still it's doing a cut when you may not have to. And I can say that I can do it the best way and the healthiest scientific way, but it's still something you're doing to your body that you really shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So 135 makes a lot of sense for me. Okay, last question for me. Um, now you 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 did say or no actually this different question here. You, you're going to be 39 in February, right? You don't look a day over 29, so I'm just going to say <laughs> that. Um, but w do you feel like you're going to be able to, to compete into your 40s? Like, what, what is your mindset here moving forward as far as longevity goes? Yeah, when I look at all the other 20-year-olds out there, they may have youth, but they're doing it wrong. You know, I, I've done research and I'm, I'm making an investment into the longevity of my body, even outside of fighting. And because of that, it's helped pay me back. And it's, it's I'm keeping a well-oiled, well-maintained machine that's ahead of the curve of everybody else. I outrun and out-sprint every 20-year-old in practice. And I'm just going to continue to do that until I can't anymore. But it's mostly my mind over my body telling it that this is what you're supposed to do. I love the evolution of the sport. Like... I'm not invested in the wins and the losses. I'm invested in the process. I get to meet people. Every training, there's something new to learn, and I have fun in every practice. That's what I love doing. 
this is just an opportunity to test everything I've been learning. So as long as I have that mentality, I think I'll be able to do this as long as I possibly can. Hey Liz, congratulations on such a great win. I just have one question. If Bellator, if Scott Coker were to come to you in a couple months and say, we want to do a woman's Bellator flyweight grand prix, $1 million at the end of the tunnel, you just got to get through the gauntlet of contenders. Is that something that might interest you in the future? You know, I, it is. You know, I, I love the idea of bringing more talent into the division and into Bellator. Um, I think it'd be way cooler to see it at 135, but if it's a 125, I'm for it. Okay, so Liz, I'm just curious. Two fights with her. They're in the back window right now. Let's be honest. Do you think you're going to see her at least one more time? Uh, I don't think so. I think that Bellator has done such a great job, but they're continuing to grow this division. Um, I think, for one, her arm's going to have to heal, so that's going to take some time. Um, but there are other women that are learning from the mistakes that she made in both fights, and I think they're starting to get really privy onto what she does and what she doesn't do, and they're going to be able to defeat her, so I don't think that you're going to see her rising to the top quite in the fashion that she has before.